you find solace in the life that you are, you are living. I'm giving you a secret. If you find solace in Rumamongarin, maybe most of the time, you find yourself taking one hour talking about people. You're not going anywhere. The enemy knows that he places you there so that you waste a lot of time. If you are, God has given you responsibility to be a boss in an office somewhere, kindly serve humanity and serve them with a lot of dignity because you're not indispensable. Your time is coming. The time is very short. Serve humanity with all your heart because it is an opportunity that God has given you. But if you are there and you are sucking people, thinking that you are indispensable, my friend, your day is coming. It's just the enemy using you as an agent to execute his mission like Judas. But believe you me, your time is very short. If you are there running up and down, doing what things are not right, know that even right now, your destiny would have been greater. Because the more you seek the Lord, the more you hide yourself in prayer, the more your destiny is higher. And the enemy knows. That is why he makes sure that we are not focused as Christians. Although we confess Christ as our Lord in our lives, we have a lot of confusion. The enemy makes sure that where there's prayer involved, you cannot even pray for a minute. Others pray before they say, um, uh, others sleep. By the time the person praying in the house says amen, everybody is, a, is asleep. And others pray for the food only. May God help us. So that today, we know the secret. The secret is in prayer. The secret is in prayer. Honest prayer is praying with others. You need to have someone, a prayer warrior that you pray together. Because you have to be keepers of one another. And you have to have someone who holds your hand. Nobody is an island. Nobody knows everything. Nobody knows how to pray. It is the Lord who teaches us to pray. And the people who are uh, higher in faith, because we are not the same. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3, 1, that there are people who can be able to chew bones, but there are others who can do what? Who can take soup. But for the people that are above, kindly hold someone's hand and pray with them and pray that you see results because prayer is not just praying. Prayer is, is, is seeing results. You may not find results even in the place that you work, even in your children. The secret is prayer. You find results in prayer. When you serve the Lord through prayer, you can never go wrong. I know some of you are praying, are praying a lot. You know, they are praying, they are every time committing their lives to God, their circumstances, but don't stop praying. That is the secret. Because some of you, maybe you stopped praying a long time ago. Maybe you used to go to Cataloni, but you have stopped praying. But I want to encourage you. That you may pray. Peter confessed that now I know this is the Lord who has rescued me. Because when he was in that jail and the angel of the Lord came to rescue him and he was told to dress up himself and he was sneaked out of uh, the prison without even the uh, God's noticing what was happening. All that time, Peter could not notice what the Lord was doing in his life. You know, always the Lord works behind our scenes. Some of the things that the Lord has done, even in my life, I cannot even understand. And that is what some singers sing and say, Umeni beba, haijawa rahisi, kufika hapa, Ni mkono wa mungu, umeni beba, haijawa rahisi, 
Kufika hapa ni mkono wa Mungu. Umenibeba. Umenibeba. Umenibeba ni mkono wa Mungu. Umenibeba. Some of these songs are very inspiring and such people of God when you talk to them they will tell you the real story of what happened in their lives. You and me experience the Lord in different ways in our lives. And you ask yourself, what really happened here? You cannot even tell. You cannot even understand. But the enemy is always fighting us that we have a faint heart. We are not able to move on. There is something that is very unique in the church then. This church, during the apostolic time, uh, people are just realizing results, you know? People pray and things happen. There's something that is very unique in this church. And I think we need to, we need to ask God to help us. That the church then was very powerful. I don't want to ask whether the church right now is very powerful, but I'm saying that the church then was very powerful. The Christians were united. Are we united? No, please don't answer me. But I'm saying that the Christians then were united. They had one goal. And after we leave that house, people are not saying that, ah, sasa, na mama alienda, ama mzee alienda, sasa tunamuambea nini. Ui mama ni kutusumbua tu. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. They had one goal. They carried one another's burdens. And actually that is what I like most in that church. Because fellowships were taking place from house to house. And uh, something that is so unique that was happening, because the Bible says during this time that even people who had need, it was like they had no need. Why was the Bible saying so? Why were all these wonderful things happening in this ideal church that Jesus wanted us to have? It's because when people go from one house to the other, if people come to Machila's house and one of the members realizes that the Machilas are si sitting on the floor, you just call your child, you call your son, or you call your daughter because all the people are going for fellowship, meeting from house to house. And you secretly tell your son, kindly go home, carry that one set of chair, and bring to Machila's home. And as the church and the fellowship was going on, as people are converging, you know, people find Sitzka coming. And nobody will leave that house, that church, saying that, eh, kumbi ata viti hawakuwa nayo. Sasa viti imeleto na jasper. Wana asifiwe. People would not even say that. Truly, truly, that is what was happening in that church. That you see a need, and you do what? You act. You don't even ask anybody. You just go out and say, hey, I've realized there are no fruits in this house. And you go to the shop, you buy, you bring people fellowship, and the Bible says the church grew. One as if you were. The church grew. People took one another's burdens, and it was like people who have no need it was like nobody had need. The Bible says that the poor will always be with you. One as if you were. That's a fact that we can never avoid. But the truth of the matter is that we are blessed. I am blessed. You are blessed. You have it. Not because you are better, but because of the grace of the Lord. One as if you were. Lest one would boast. And for us who confess Christianity, are we really Christians? Or when we see need now, we have an agenda. Hey, we become CNN. 
Now we are able to report one as if we become a citizen in extension and we allocate ourselves salaries. And we go talking about people. One as if we, the ideal church then was not like that. People carried one another's burdens until it was like no one has need. One as if we, touch your neighbor and ask them, do you have any need? People have needs. Uh, people are used, especially in Nairobi context. Mlango unafungwa, kuna karangwa, nothing. Kwanza watu unapika very, especially right now when things are very difficult. People have even changed maybe their time of cooking. One as if you, because nobody wants them. <laughs> Your neighbors, things are going away, they're, they're being auctioned. Now, you become CNN to report and say, hata nyumba yake ilifungwa. One as if you, may God help us. Because that was not the intention of the church. That was not the intention of Jesus Christ in our life. They carried one another's burdens. That is what the Lord expects us to do today. The 21st century church is what the Lord expects us to do. If the Lord comes today, Jesus comes in our church today, will we, he find us ready Will we be worthy to tatobo kweli? Will we make it? That is a question that you and me needs to, to really search our, our hearts. And the Bible says Peter went straight to the house of Mary after realizing that enyewe Enyewe hu hii ilikuwa mungu. Wana asifiwe. Enyewe ilikuwa wewe. Ile umefanya ilikuwa wewe. And then he goes where the Christians were converted. I want to believe that there was no, you know, rumomongering in that church. People are not saying, hata hata toka. <laughs> but people are saying, tunawamba afanya nini atoke. And he proceeded to that church. Can you proceed to the Christians to tell them this is what the Lord has done? Or oh, you hide your, your what? Your victory. Because people can steal it. The 21st century, guys, can somebody come to you after receiving a blessing and tell you, by the way, the prayers that we've been making, God has answered my prayer. Or you just keep quiet that nobody hears. Like a friend of mine who <laughs> went to UK and was telling me, I started telling people when I'm in UK because I know my people. One as if you... <laughs> <coughs> I know my I know Yo safari hata singeenda Wangesema hata yu jina si yangu They would have made sure that They can even go to <laughs> To the embassy I don't know whether that is possible I told me I just opened my mouth Even when I was in the aircraft Nikasikia tu nikama tumbo inaniuma But I knew it is because of the uneasy that I had. Will I really fly and go out? Am I these guys will notice before I go? But Peter proceeds to the house where Christians were converged, to the house of Mary, and started knocking the gate. And, uh, you know, a maid servant was called Rhoda, a very interesting lady. She's the one who had the knock and went to the door. And when she saw Peter, she was amazed. Alishanga. And instead of opening the door, she went back to the, to the house. And she told the people who were converging there that, that I have seen Peter. You know? And the Bible says that Peter was still knocking at the door. And what happened to the members? What did they say? Are you out of your mind? Because they could not believe that it is Peter who is free. One as if you, the same people who are praying for Peter, they knew that the burden is heavy. The warfare is fierce. I cannot blame them. I know they knew that the burden, the warfare, was not easy. So they could not believe. The same way, you know, a message can be brought to you and you just say that, Niflani. I cannot believe, but with joy. These guys who are not complaining or are not perplexed. Oh, 
they were not behaving that way because of Peter. But they were just wondering who the Lord is, what the Lord can do. One as if he were. And, you know, they, they, they just wondered. Are you out of your mind? That's a very heavy word. I don't know whether I'm see, you're seeing it the way I'm seeing. People come to tell you this is what is happening with so and so. And you say, are you out of your mind? Would that have happened really? And Peter himself, after the doors opened, he came in. And they celebrate the Lord of what he had done. You know, there are things that can happen in my life. There are things that can happen in your life that will leave a mark, that will make people wonder, is it really true? You know, is it really true? Niflani, Bwana Sifi, I don't know whether that has ever happened in your life. That something happens and people just start wondering, is it true? Ni James, ni ukweli, apana, I think you are out of your mind. It cannot happen. Bwana Sifi, God can do that to anybody. God can do that to you. I do not know what your challenge is. Because for Peter's challenge is that he, it was the time of persecution. You and me today, we have diverse challenges. Your challenge is not mine. Even right now, you could be wondering, would I really go back and found, find the situation different? Because of the challenge that you are going through, I have come to encourage you today. God is working behind the scenes. And God is going to surprise the people around you. And they will say, are you really talking the truth? Because God's work is there to surprise human beings. It's only the God's things that thrive. The plans of God will ever succeed. God will ever win. Anything that we've been presenting to the Lord. For Peter, it took six days. For you, it may take another one month. For you, it may take another one year. For Peter, it was this time that by the time the living bread occasion is over, the seventh day, he was facing what? Persecution. But for you, you don't know. Me, I don't know. Maybe tomorrow, landlord, I may a fine in at a funga nyumba. Maybe it's a terminal disease, and the doctors have told you that it will not be possible to live for another one month. You know, the enemy is there to put deadline to people. Bwana sifiwe. Bwana sifiwe. Anaweka nini? Deadline. Kwa sababu ye anamuisho. Bwana sifiwe. Lakini mungu hana muisho. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whatever the devil says upon our lives, it will not work. Whatever the Lord says will always work because the, all, the Lord will always win. I pray that something will happen in your life that will leave people to wonder. Will leave people to wonder and ask themselves, is this really the Lord? Is it true what people are saying? God is going to do something, my brother and my sister. Just believe and it will happen. Now on the contrary, Herod fought the church, but he never went far. He became sick, he was struck and died. Many a times we have such people who fight the church, or even people who fight our destiny, who fight, you know, what you call the Herodian spirits. We don't miss them in our lives. But the Herodian spirit, my brother, my sister, do not worry about the Herodian spirit. They have already received their prize, and their time is very short. Some of us, we are short-sighted that every time we concentrate with the Herodians, we do not know that they are there to catapult us to our level. They are there to move us to where God wants, to, want, wants us to be. It happened to Joseph. It will happen to you, because those guys knew we are through with him. 
but glory be to the name of the Lord. That as the enemy is planning evil, the Lord is planning great things upon our lives. The Herodians will never make it in our lives. They will never make it in your life because Herod never thrived. Within a short time, he was died. I pray that the Herodians, the Egyptians that we are seeing today, we will see them no more because the Lord will have done great things in our lives. I want to wind up by saying that we are called to pray earnestly, genuinely to carry each other's burdens. So if you have not been doing that, you can start now interceding for your friends, that genuine intercession for your friend. We should be keepers of one another in terms of prayer with God. We share our goals. We pray that the Lord will bring the ideal church, the church then that people carry one another's burden, the church that was initiated through Peter in the book of Matthew, that to you, Peter, I build my church, and the gates of hell shall never prevail against it. Let me tell you, the words that we speak, the words that I speak, the Bible that we read is true. The earlier we know, the better. Whatever that we say is, true. Many a times people say that the Bible is not true. But people who wrote the Bible like Luke, they wrote like the Apostle Paul, they wrote and they say whatever that we write we have, we have seen, we have witnessed. And the early we know the better, the better. I pray that we reach a point of a comfort zone. The Bible says that Peter, uh, maybe it's a challenge. Knowing very well Kesho, Nakula Ugali, Amisho Kesho, Nita, Itakua Hivi. The enemy is what, what, this is what the enemy is planning. But I know God has good plans. And he took a sleep, his sleep. It is a contradiction. Sometimes we don't sleep when we have things that we are going through. We don't sleep. Bwana Sifiwe. Sleep, go away. People chat even up to midnight, past midnight, two o'clock. People are posting on status. Why? When the people are in the midst of sleep, because some of us, we sleep a lot and we snore a lot. But other people are, are not sleeping. Why? Because they cannot sleep. They look at the problem. They don't look at the big God. I pray that it will be to us like Peter. Who took a sleep in that midst of a challenge? He took a sleep and say he slept knowing very well God is work it out. God will work it out. God will work it out. One thing I know, one thing that is true, God will work it out. Let's sing again. God We'll work it out. God will work it out. One thing I know, one thing that is true. God will work it out. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we bless your great and your holy name. We honor you. Abba, Father, for your faithfulness, for your faithful to a thousand generations. And you are faithful to us. You remain faithful, oh God. Yesterday passed with its troubles. A year passed with its troubles. But the truth of the matter is that we are alive. We are shaken, but we are not uh, 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 perplexed. We, we, uh, we go through challenges, oh God, but the enemy has never gotten hold of us because you are at work. I know, God Almighty, it does not matter what we are going through, but what thing that we know is that, God, you work it out, that you are doing things that no man can understand. That which no ear has heard, that which no eye has seen, is that which you have prepared for your children. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I do something new. Do a resetting. Do a recreation, oh God. Those who are weak, make them strong. 
Those who feel that they are downtrodden, my Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that I may lift them and assure them, O oh God, so that they may come to a moment of rest, knowing that God is in charge. I know that, Master, you will do it because you are God. You did it to Peter. You did it to people. You will do it to your children. We thank you and we bless you and we honor you in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen.